I wanted to talk today about um, ideologists and picking one. However, you also have to look at the clinic. <laughs> I run into clinics sometimes that, you know, their communication is awful. You try to call, you're put on hold, you wait a long time, or um, you also, uh, and that's the only communication they have. And it, it makes it difficult because, you know, sometimes, sometimes you're exhausted and it's very hard to handle the phones and they don't use email for some odd, strange reason. <laughs> With me, my last, my first clinic, they used email or whatever communication I needed. They texted me when it was almost time for my appointment. You know, it was great. They didn't have a problem with text or email and communicated very well with me. So not an issue. So I think that a clinic that has a flexibility in communication, what you feel most comfortable with is great, you know. Um, I always use email, so it wasn't a problem for them. Some clinics are a little strange about emails, like, oh, no, you can't use email. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I don't know what the beef is. <laughs> so It's not like you're exchanging medical information. So that's a little different. Um, but, yeah, you, you want to see how that communication flows in terms of the, the receptionist area. And I think that's important because you don't want to be frustrated, you know. <laughs> that can also impact your hearing loss. <laughs> but, <laughs> but truly, make sure that they are good at the front desk, you know. Um, also, you, you want to figure out the location. If, if it's a good clinic, to me, it doesn't matter where it's located. You know, it's nice it, the closer it is, but, you know, I had a clinic that was very good and very responsive to my needs. It was a little far out. So, in the next thing is to choose an audiologist. So, an audiologist who listens to you, an audiologist who takes the time to, to hear what you're saying, and, you know, makes notes, uh, but also an audiologist who has that skill to move things along so that, you know, you could talk about hearing loss all day long, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, but she has to get across, you know, what, what your needs are. And hopefully in that clinic, going back to the clinic a little bit, that they work with various brands, not just one. But a variety of, of brands like Otacon, Resound, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, brands, um, not just one or two. So it's really important that they uh, are able to uh, offer you a variety because n sometimes one type it doesn't really work. So um, then you know that they're a good communicator, that they respond, and they let you know that they heard you and that it makes sense what you're saying and that you can, that they can do that or not do, you know, certain, certain projects or certain, not projects, but uh, to be able to help your hearing in a certain way. Um, you know, with me, my hearing loss would be going up and down, and that's just part of a sudden hearing loss. And sometimes it would be down, and that would be it. So, you know, for a few days, I'd be deaf. So, you know, the audiologist really helped, helped me to, to counsel me and for me not to be afraid. Um, she also, you know, saw me often, like every, every other month, every two months, she was an angel in that sense, because her calendar was open enough that she could get me in and work with me on wherever my hearing was, because sometimes it would come back up, so she would have to adjust the hearing aids. So it was turbulence, you know, that she was able to ride in that sense. So 
Um, let me see. Uh, so she's patient with you. You know, some people are just really anxious about their hearing loss, so it's really important to be patient, to hear them, um, and to know that things are going to be okay. And it's just, um, so to have that skill. My, my ideologist was, was great in terms of counseling and being able to turn that anxiety or turn that craziness, which my hearing was, you know, into normality, even though I didn't care for it, but, <laughs> but to turn that, you know, craziness of up and down into normal. That was my new normal, and I had to live with it, so it was important for me to know that. You went in audiologists also, they can handle the technology. You know, there are pros and cons to having a young audiologist versus an older audiologist, and sometimes you want to say, well, Age shouldn't, shouldn't matter, Lisa. Well, it just depends, you know, and a, a younger audiologist is gonna be fluid with the technology, have the most up-to-date information, et cetera, et cetera. An older audiologist will have more experience, but sometimes they hate the technology, <laughs> so, <laughs> and the changes. So you really want to have a balance of both. So um, my audiologist was young, so she didn't have a problem with all the different brands that we were working with and, and finding your file in the computer, uh, not a problem. So it was a breeze with technology, not an issue. Um, so, you know, th that's, that's important to me because I have run into doctors and audiologists that uh, just can't find anything on the computer. There's nothing there. They can't <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> come back tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, just <laughs> so it just depends on the, on the, the age matter sometimes. You know, sometimes it's good to get an older audiologist because of the experience. Not so much for the technology. You'll notice that some complain <laughs> up to wazoo about the technology, but um, the younger ones, they have no problem. Um, uh, you know, and you know, that time management in which you start the appointment, and at the end of the appointment, you do feel like <coughs> you accomplished something, and that you know what's gonna happen in the next appointment. So that's what I'm talking about in terms of time management. Because she has other appointments and because you need to get along, you need to run along you know, with your day so that they know how to manage that time in the appointment. The patient you know, brought this issue and by the time you're done over here that you know exactly what you're gonna do, what the plan is, and how you're gonna handle it. So. That's what I mean about time management. Um, the widows, uh, that, you know, the respect. You know, that you feel like they're so distracted, you know, with the computer that they're not listening to you at all. So, <laughs> so you don't want that. Um, that they're listening to you, they're looking at you, they're paying attention, and they're making sure that they understood what you said. So, you know, these are some, some ideas in terms of picking an ideologist, that your files are kept private, that, you know, that you see that everything is being handled correctly, um, you know, and if you have any concerns about anything, um, you know, it's, it's important to be able to ask, ask questions and, um, you know, handle it from there if you have any concerns about files, confidentiality, or how the front desk handled something, or the hearing aid, if there's any problems with that. So, um, you know, it, that it's fluid, and the conversation is respectful. I remember one day when the ENT doc, <laughs> She pulled me in and just said, I'm, I'm really sorry 
but after, you know, our working together, I know that you are going deaf, and there's nothing I can do to stop that process. <laughs> I was looking at Dr. Kornack like, okay, you know, and so the ideologist came in, and she said, Lisa, let's go to my office. And I just sat there dumbfounded. You know, I thought this was just hearing loss and we were going to treat it. But I just looked at her like, what, what just happened? <laughs> so, you know, and then she was able to pick it up from there and talk about, you know, the needs I was going to have and what we were going to be able to do and that, you know, they weren't going to let me just go deaf. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so they, they, they worked as a team, and, you know, Dr. Kornack delivered the, the bad news, and the audiologist gave the counseling <laughs> and helped me with processing the information that was just given to me. So sometimes it has to happen that way. And the audiologist also helped me through the process of getting into cochlear implants. So she, um, she did that very well. And I see her often. She's in my neighborhood. So sometimes when I see her, you know, she gives me a big hug. And uh, it's, it's good to see her. Um, it, I was with her, I think, for mm -hmm, maybe three years. Yeah, until she transferred me over to the hospital. Uh, where they took over for the cochlear implants. So those are the things that you want to see, a smoothness, a respect, uh, good conversation, good communication. Uh, and if, if not, let's say none of this is happening. The front desk is driving you bonkers. They lose your information. They forget to make your appointment. You know, all that crazy stuff that we've experienced in other offices just say no, no thank you, <laughs> I'm not doing this. So, and let them know, you know, you're really bad with communication, you're really forgetting to set my appointments, you're dropping me. Uh, the audiologist is very late in, in taking me into my appointments and I can't afford that, so I'm gonna go elsewhere. So you have the freedom and the right to do that. So um, that's really important for you to know. Uh, so if you are new and you're starting to get into, you know, working with an audiologist, these are my tips that I think are, are important. These are the areas that you want to look into that, you know, the clinic is, is very smooth with uh, communication, setting up your appointments, the, how they're treated, how you're treated at the clinic, and the, the timeliness of the audiologist and the ENT, hopefully you have one there. Um, and, you know, and not to be driven bonkers <laughs> on top of the fact that you have hearing loss. So anyway, these are the tips that I had. I don't know what other tips you might have. If you have had uh, years of experience going to an ideologist um, or to uh, a clinic for um, cochlear implants, because that I didn't talk about, but that's also important that you have a clinic with audiologists and um, ENT doc. Uh, usually they have ENT surgeons uh, if you're looking at uh, cochlear implants. And, you know, you also want to make sure that that clinic can handle all three brands. We only have three brands in the United States, Medell, Advanced Bionics, and Cochlear America. So <coughs> if they can handle all three, then that's, that's a good clinic. It's a good size of a clinic, and they can handle any situation that might come up. All right, folks, I'll leave it at that. And if you have further questions about this, please post them down below or any uh, suggestions, more suggestions that you would have based on your experience, please do that. And um, thank you so much for coming by, for spending a few minutes here with me. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you came and listened to, to me babble. So. <laughs> so thank you so much. And feel free to subscribe. It's free. 
and make uh, any likes or any comments you would like. And that also helps the channel grow. All right. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.